Hi there, Lisa Rona here and welcome to another Assemble This video. Today's card is all about an amazing floral watercolor background and I have a simple tip to make watercoloring easier and hopefully less scary. I'm featuring the beautiful Winsomeness border background stamp and I'm pairing that with a scripty birthday saying from the Hugs, Kisses, and Birthday Wishes stamp sets, both by Unity Stamp Company. I'm starting out by stamping my background onto watercolor paper using some Colorbox chalk ink in charcoal. I'm going to prep my watercolor paper with an embossing buddy, which is just a powder tool to help prevent stray embossing powder, because I know I will be embossing this later and I'm just inking up my stamp and pressing that down into some Canson XL watercolor paper. And I just did that once and um, my Misty makes it super easy that I can do that another, another time just so I get a nice impression of that image. Watercolor paper tends to have a bit of texture so it's nice to be able to repeat stamp like that so I know I have a nice solid image. And then this is our simple tip we are going to be embossing this image just with some clear embossing powder. This will create some uh, bridges and uh, just makes watercoloring super easy because we don't have to worry about colors blending as much into each other because we're creating these little wells for that water to just kind of sit in. This is a great trick for beginners so we can kind of get the feel of how watercolors move and blend. I'm using the Kiritake Gansai Tambi watercolors and a water brush. The barrel of this pen holds the water for me and I like to squeeze a small puddle into the paint pan and then just pick it up with the brush and then just run it over the bloom. As you can see it doesn't take much technique. I'm just kind of pushing that water and paint around and filling in where the the bloom lines are and then I just go back with a little bit more paint if I want to layer on a bit more shadow and a bit more depth because it just creates more uh, more of a lifelike bloom when we have different layers of paint um, it's just not one solid color just filled in this way there's some shadow and some mimicking of different different shades of that bloom As the paint dries, um, you'll see me kind of go back to some of the older blooms, again layering on more of a shadow and depth. And I'll do that as the paint dries, because when you layer over a color over previously painted areas that have dried, then you get a more vibrant effect and a, more of a contrast. So I'm painting pretty much in real time. I did speed it up just a little bit just because it could take a little bit of time. Just because I am a slow colorer, even with water coloring, I do take my time. I uh, just make sure that each area of that bloom is fairly covered. I don't mind if there are some white spaces because again, things are not perfect in nature. And so I am trying to kind of mimic that with my water coloring. That one big bloom, I had a lot of paint. So I'm using some of that paint and coloring in the, the blooms next to it and just spreading it around. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and then I'll kind of come back in and, and move that paint around to some of those other blooms. Again, just creating some layers of different shades. And then I'm just gonna go in and do the same thing with the leaves. And I'm only using one color for each, each uh, section. The blooms were all done with that one red. The leaves are all being done with this one green. And again, I'm just letting the water kind of do its thing. You might not be able to see it on camera, but it is pooling in some areas a little thicker and a little bit thinner in other areas. And that's the look I'm going for. Again, kind of mimicking what, what we see in nature because not every leaf is always the same color all over. And then last, I'm just going to fill in the center here with a bit of blue, starting out with the paint uh, around the edge and behind the bloom, so we get a bit of a shadow behind there, so it's a little bit darker. 
and then using my paintbrush to pull it into the center and maybe adding a little bit of water as well just to thin it out so it is lighter in the center and leaving the edges a bit darker. Again, I'm looking for that contrast. I'm just going to keep going around here playing with paint. If you let it dry a little bit and before you move it, you can always add a little bit of water and it'll kind of reactivate it. I let my watercolor piece dry completely and then I stamped my sentiment and embossed it in gold on some vellum paper. You could either trim that down into a fishtail shape or uh, like I did and die cut it with a die, a stitch die, so it has a little bit of texture going on as well. And I'm just gluing that straight down onto my card front and then added a bit of black and white washi over that. And then I have a strip of gold glitter paper cardstock and that piece was just a little bit big so I'm going to trim that down and then just glue that on top. Here is the finished card with that beautiful and easy watercolor floral background. The border stamp just helps to highlight the sentiment on that vellum paper. And we added a bit of shine by embossing the sentiment in gold and adding a bit of gold glitter paper as well. I'll have all the supplies listed below. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked it. Plus, if you have any questions or a sweet comment, post below. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.